combine week and i already did a video yesterday on my potential winners coming after the combine so this one's gonna be on potential fallers but what's crack a lacking it's your boy bro Schmo. just in case you did not know so go ahead become a bro and subscribe leave this video a thumbs up if you enjoy the content as always let me know what you think in the comment section below let's have that nice beautiful football discourse i got a two-round mock draft came out monday i did it with alex from hail mayor sports it was a blast also got my top 150 prospects my big board going into the combine you could also check that out let's go ahead get into the nitty gritty starting with george car loftus honestly could end up being a faller depending on how he tests out there's rumor rumors he's not decided yet if he wants to test out the combine yet or not because he when it comes to him when it comes to the edge position you're looking for length you're looking for bend he doesn't bring those to the table what he brings is power explosiveness and that explosiveness it, he needs to look explosive in the explosion drills here at the combine he might he might sounds like he might put that off till the pro day there having the home field advantage but if he doesn't test out explosive then what you're looking at is a guy that's really more of this more of this edge setter rather than a guy that could really get after the passer consistently though he did do that efficiently his freshman season in this past year if you go look at the pressures so there are those concerns with with Carl Loftus and if he is viewed just as this edge setter again he has a skill set that translate typically to good success while it's not like high end upside still translates very well to the NFL it's just one that's not highly valued or highly sought after in the NFL draft that's why you see some of these guys like Mel Kuyper um Daniel Jeremiah Dane Brugler who list Carl Loftus outside their top 20 prospects so it wouldn't surprise me if he ends up not testing out as explosive as we expect because he looks explosive when you turn on the tape then there may be a bit of concern there there is some legitimacy to Carl Loftus potentially falling till then he's a top 10 prospect to me hard to project <laughs> when i do a mock but he's a top 10 prospect to me all right going over the next guy Traylon burks you might be like what this guy's gonna be a winner easy which i don't i agree with i'm the thing is i don't think he's gonna test out on the agility drills i'd be surprised if he tests out in the explosive drills because there may be a concern there in terms of well his get off he, he's not exactly quick off the line I'm, he gets going fast but that initial burst i i don't really see it and typically he was working out of the slot where he got a lot of free get offs and allowed him to get going is he a guy that can do that on the outside consistently there will be those questions there will be the questions with the agility again i don't expect him to do anything but the 40 when it comes to the combine and he might put put those other drills off until his uh, pro day, if he even does them. Because I don't think he's going to test well in the agility drills. Again, I kind of like think he's going to test out, at least in similar, not, not like verbatim, to like DK, where the agility drills just weren't his thing. He's a guy that, when asked to like cut or break on certain routes... They come off more rounded and they're not necessarily that clean. I, I think that's akin to what Burks is like. To me, he's like, I like to comp him to like an AJ Brown without the polish like and the route nuance. <laughs> you know, he, his route tree was very simplistic at Arkansas. So he wasn't asked to run a lot of routes. So his route running isn't exactly top notch. But the thing is, the dude is a mismatch nightmare when you take his speed and size and physicality into well into into what into note no and when you take that into account bam there it is that's the word i'm looking for then yeah this guy on certain routes he good luck guarded him i don't think when i say he could be a faller it's i'm not saying oh he's gonna fall out of the first round absolutely not 
I could see him fall into like maybe that 20 to 30 area in the draft. Currently, I got him as a top 10 prospect just because I, I value that um, what he can bring as a mismatch nightmare on the perimeter. But there are those there are going to be those questions. So that's why if he ends up running those drills, I think he could end up hurting his stock more so. So that's why I just don't expect him to test out on him at all. And this is really the only time you're going to hear him as a faller. So moving on, Bubba Bolden. Let's talk about somebody that's not really talked about in the first in day one or day two. Bubba Bolden. Currently, I think I got a fifth round grade on him. Uh, he got hurt during the Shrine Bowl practices. Did play in the game, I believe. And it, hopefully, he. It sounds like he's good to go for the combine. Now this guy was toted as coming in with some like legit athleticism like you see we've seen his range at Miami you know it's just the guy's a bit un, un unpolished when it comes to how how he views the field uh the angles he takes to make tackles uh he he isn't the <laughs> when it comes to tackling he could aim a little lower he has a he had that targeting call at the beginning of the season versus Alabama where, honestly, it was more – I think it was, it was a targeting call, but it was also kind of a late hit. It was kind of uncalled for on uh, Brian Robinson. But Bubba Bolden has – like, he has these physical traits. That's at least – that's the assumption. He has these physical traits. He has this great athletic ability, the length, the athletic profile. He just needs to test out with it because if he doesn't, what does he have on tape? Former transfer from USC – came in played for Miami and played very uh like I would say inconsistent like over his career 20 missed tackle rate like that's not great coverage like this guy was all over the place this season in in this this year it was cut short by a shoulder injury like this guy has a lot of potential but now he needs to show that there is a like that potential like shows up athletically and physically, you know, or else they're not going to view him as this like monster that could has this crazy range deep. They're going to view him more as a box option that can't tackle. So threw him on the list. Do you baby big hurricanes fan next to Marvin Leal. He is a big, big question mark. He put on bad weight uh, during the second half of the season, as Texas A&M started to play him more inside, he had trouble in the run game. He couldn't really take on uh, like blocks like you would expect him to, like he did in the past, because he, he is twitchy. He's got great movement skills, but again, he put on that way. If he cuts down to 285, then he still needs to test out like a like a freak and show that twitch. But then that puts him in this. Okay, is he more of this like three uh, three four? And is he maybe a guy we play on the edge on early downs and kick inside? Like, he's going to have to test like it. Like, he's a bit of a tweener in that regard. But I think he, he comes back weighing in around 280, 285. I don't think he'll be at that 290. Uh, he could be, though. Could be. But he's going to come in. He'll show off. Yeah, dude. I, I am this stud with the movement skills. With the like we already know, like his hand usage is like top notch. Like this guy can get after the passer very effectively. It's just again, when you're a tweener, you gotta show that twitchiness. You know, you got to. And I really think he's gonna come in and he's gonna elevate his stock. A guy that I actually have reservations for is my next on my list, Logan Hall. Came in weighing 6'5", 278 at the Senior Bowl. Ain't going to cut it, and it showed up. The guy had struggled on the interior. He re like, he, tr he, 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 has, he has a mean bull rush. He wins with leverage, and he actually has a lot of variety when it comes to uh, how he bull rushes, uh, how he uses hands, um, and just what type of, like, uh, not necessarily hand counters, but his approach to each and every bull rush and what what move comes after like he does he does that extremely well but at 278 he is a tweener for all intents and purposes i don't think he has that physicality to stay on the interior i don't know if he's twitch enough to stay on the tier and then in that case we're looking at a guy that's going to be playing the edge at like 278 270 i really hope he like cuts down the way and just like you know what i'm an edge i'm just an edge that's who i am 
I'm an edge. I don't think he's quite at the level of what we saw with Peyton Turner, uh, his former teammate coming out last year. So it'll be interesting. I think this is a big, big week for Logan Hall. So keep him on your mind. All right, next guy on the list, Malik Willis. Didn't expect him here. Didn't expect him here, did you? Because I, I tout this guy as like, okay, you, you, we know he's got this strong arm, an arm that can make every throw. He just, he really needs to learn how to work inside a structure. We know the, improv, uh, the improvisation is like, wow it's beautiful but he needs to learn to work inside his structure he needs to clean up on the decision making a lot of that stuff you view him as a developmental prospect but you look at what he does with his legs 94 missed tackles over the course of the season that was second to only kenneth kenneth walker in all of college football at six foot 220 he's a bit compact so it's like yeah that's to be expected but the dude needs to test out athletically to really prove he's he's not like Lamar Jackson mobile. I'm curious, will he even test out like Josh Allen mobile? To be fair, Josh Allen was kind of a freak at his size. So it's a little bit different. So Malik Willis, he does need to show a plus athletic profile in the drills this week. So that's why I list him here. It's, again, here at the combine, I don't think for me it's, oh, what can he do with his arm? We know what he can do with his arm. I want to see what he can do with his legs. So that's something that's going to be interesting for me to watch. And then, so Quandre White, going by just Quan uh, White at the Combine, but I'm just going to call him Quan for, the sake, for my sake, is a very interesting prospect because a lot of people are, ex like, are expecting this guy to test out phenomenally athletically. Like, they, they think he's going to blow up the agility and the explosive drills. Mike Renner included him in to, his top 150. I'm not quite there yet because I really don't know what to think about him because the sample size is so small. Let's go through the history of White. So you kind of get where I'm coming from. Because uh, this cat, like, he really, really didn't get significant playing time till this season. And it was 89 attempts in terms of being a rusher. If you go back, he was actually a former Florida State prospect coming out of high school in uh, the 20, I believe it was the 2017. Was it the 2017 recruiting class? I think it was 2017. I don't know. He's going to be 23 in December. So not. it's not like he's on, on the old side. That's kind of like mid, you know, but. He was the number seven running back recruit, uh, the number 26 player out of Florida, the number 141st player by 24-7 sports. Uh, and you know what? The dude came to Florida State. He worked out as a running back on Florida State's practice uh, squad or scout team. And then they moved him to outside linebacker in the 2018 season. Say what? And... He didn't like that, so he decided to transfer. He went to he went the JUCO route. He stayed at uh, Iowa. What was it? Iowa Western Community College for two seasons, and then ended up transferring to. Oh no, he only stayed there one year, and then he ended up transferring to South Carolina, where they kind of already had the established running back there in Kevin Harris. Kevin Harris also going to be there at the combine. Interested to see how he tests out, but going into the year. Uh, they like Kevin Harris was coming out of the back surgery, so they kind of eased him in and white was kind of essentially the back that was like the compliment to Harris. And then Harris had the ankle injury against Vandy in week seven, and it really became more of a split between white and Harris throughout the season until the end of the year where uh, white didn't play in the bowl game. And you actually saw what Harris can do with a full workload went off for 31 carries, 182 yards, a touchdown. He also had seven force missed tackles, but it's, it's weird with white. Cause you look at him, you look at him and he didn't get a chance to test or to practice at the senior bowl. I guess he tweaked something, but he only measured out and you ex you expect this guy to have some passing upside. To be fair, South Carolina this past season, the quarterback position was kind of woof. And 
he really just ran a simple like running back route tree and didn't do much with it in my opinion like going back looking at it uh and to be fair i i've only seen a little bit on this guy this past season and he had like four drops coming on like swings like that's not great where's this guy's receiving upside it's like everyone's looking at what he can do athletically and he's a prove it this week at the combine to warrant to be a top 150 prospect so there's a lot of questions when it comes to quan white zaquandre i like zaquandre that's a that, that's a hell of a name but there are a lot of questions kevin harris is the significantly younger guy there uh we'll see how athletically gifted he is compared to uh white though i mean harris is more of a like i'm gonna run through you type of uh running back but he's like two years younger uh almost to the date like uh so i don't know it's it's just one i was looking into this and i was like this is very interesting i am curious to see how this all plays out and then I got Nicobe Dean. Rumor is Nicobe Dean is not going to participate in any of the drills at the combine. And coming into this week, there have been some questions about because there's already questions about the size. Six foot two twenty five. Is he going to be able to hold up physically um, around the line of scrimmage? He was a guy that really benefited from Georgia's defensive line, that just uber impressive defensive line. So. He, you need everyone's expecting him to test out extremely well athletically but then it's like okay well this guy reads the field so f uh, efficiently like he's really well making plays on the ball before the ball's even there i mean you go back to the kentucky game that screenplay where he was the only one for georgia that knew it was a screenplay and he got there he got there quick but you got a question like he's got he's gonna have to test out quick and we got to see him be as athletically gifted as everyone assumes so there are those questions that are circulating now when it comes to dean who already has the size uh concerns coming into this so that is something i just kind of want to put out there i still love dean as a prospect absolutely love dean and then i have cordell flout flot at a uh, lsu he was there uh mainly their slot corner this past season uh, I'm curious to see what he weighs at because the dude's thin. 6'1", and LSU listed him at 165. So it's like, woof, what the heck? Like, that's small even for a slot corner. So that's going to be interesting. I think a lot of the reasons why he like came out early because it was kind of like, why, why would he declare? Probably came because Coach Edo decided to retire not retire resign but yeah this guy like like he shows good ex instincts in the slot showed some darn good explosiveness like if he's still weighing like i want this dude to at least be around the 175 maybe 180 area because six one still pretty thin at 180 come around 180 and show that explosiveness show show us show us that the short area quickness that agility that will the nfl will have confidence in putting you in the slot so again coming in with that frame that's kind of the biggest question mark could be a faller depending on how he weighs out and how he tests out especially especially given the size like you better be an extraordinary athlete if you're going to be 170 175 and then finally this one ah i was really struggling i think Federian mathis probably is going to end up having a he's just not going to test out well and i don't think anyone should expect him to like he's right now my defensive interior seven yeah seven and i got a third round grade on him i don't think that changes if he doesn't test out great i don't expect him to test out great like this guy mainly won with length he has an extraordinary long frame uh he's a very linear athlete he's a penetrator and he won with great technique that's that's how he won he didn't win because he was explosive he didn't win because what he can do laterally actually that's one of his big things is like i don't think he's laterally he's that that great uh though though we'll get in the in the championship or in the sec 
yeah, SEC championship game. I was pretty impressed with some of uh, the plays he made. But um, he, he's just not going to be fast. Like He's just not going to test out well. So depending on where your expectation is for Fedarian Mathis, he might end up being a faller. I don't. He's not going to be a faller on my board. I am kind of set in my my sights with Mathis about like, eh, I don't think it, he's not going to test out. Like, I'll be surprised if he tested out around above average for the position. Again, this guy wins with that long frame technique. I like the prospect. So it depends where you are when it comes to your expectations. But what are, who are some of the guys you think could end up being big fallers after the combine? That's it for the video. Go ahead, do that YouTube thing as always. Until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.